there were being recorded. So now, whatever you say can and will be held against you in a court of law. <laughs> so, and uh, now I'm going to uh, begin a presentation on the uh, the journal, and I'm also going to uh, I'm also going to begin. Uh, with a moment of, of, of prayer, and I'm going to read the psalm and the gospel for the day, okay? So here we go. <clears throat> Godspell. <laughs> All right, hi from Lynn, it's Godspell. Hello, this is Father Paul Bresnahan. I'm a priest of the Episcopal Church. Welcome back to God's Spell. Time to spell it out. Who is God and how is God involved in our lives, which, of course, is for me the uh, presenting issue of my life. God Spell, that's a nice old English word for the gospel or what we call the language of God. So as we uh, begin, I'd like to take a moment of silence to remember uh, God's presence with us now. Blessed be God, the most holy, undivided, and everlasting Trinity. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. The colic for the day. Grant to us, O God, we pray, the Spirit to think and to do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I picked the alternative psalm for today because uh, it, it, it fits with a spirit of devotion that I find especially appropriate for the gospel. I will listen to what you are saying, for you are speaking peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. You, O God, will indeed grant prosperity and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before you, and peace shall be a pathway for your feet. And then uh, the gospel for the day. Oh, I have, to, I have to make one adjustment here. All right. The gospel. Immediately after feeding the 5,000, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land. For the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came, walking towards them on the lake. But when his disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. Mm -hmm. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me 
to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why do you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Uh, this is a wonderful uh, gospel for preaching, you know, anytime, anytime you get yourself into a fix, uh, a strong headwinds uh, of life and uh, where it does feel like you're drowning. And, and it's, it, to me, this is a, a powerful lesson that if we are focused on our faith, we can walk on water. But once we are focused on our distress and our fear um, and the headwinds, um, then uh, we begin to sink. So um, it, it's, uh, but that, that's another whole ser sermon. So let's not get going down that road yet. Instead, um, let's talk a little bit about the journal. <clears throat> I've been keeping a journal for a long time. But first of all, about journaling, let's, um, let's come out and say right off the bat that it ain't easy because you have to find a time. You have to figure out what am I going to say? What if somebody sees it, some people will say to me. What if somebody reads it? Where should I keep it? For the first couple of years, I myself found it very difficult to keep a journal every single day. And I have set it aside more than once. So first of all, let's, uh, let's take a look at what kind of a journal you might want. Um, this is what I keep at home, but you might also have a uh, uh, more, uh, can you see me in your uh, cameras? So mm -hmm. for instance, uh, there's a, uh, there's a journal that, um, can you see that? Yes. That's, that's like a notebook I use when I travel. So you can take a, a choice of whatever kinds of things you want. Um, uh, you can use a ballpoint pen, you could use a Parker pen, a jot or a black, but uh, I, I, would, I would recommend a, a writing implement. I also use these uh, nice leather case for my ballpoint pens, and uh, I mean my fountain pens, and I've got three of them that I rotate. And uh, to me, a, a nice uh, writing in implement helps uh, make the activity uh, sacred, which it, which it should be, I believe, which, which I feel. When, it, when it's a sacred activity to me, it, 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 it becomes more, it becomes easier to follow the discipline. So then what do you do? What do you say? Well, first of all, let's document the ordinary in life. I always start, every journal entry starts with where I am, the date, the time, the weather, so that at least I have something to say. Then I ask myself, what's happening in my life? What am I noticing about my life? What, what in the last day or so has happened that I need to, I need to, uh, talk in my heart of hearts about. How am I doing with that? Identify the events, describe the events, and then sort out the feelings. Now, my friends, I believe that remembering that feelings are the angels of God helps us to understand what our feelings are for. I believe that our feelings are indeed angels and messengers from God. 
and that they are God's invitation to go deeper. In my journal, I like to tell my story. Every day I take a few moments to read a journal entry from the day before and the day after I take the entry. And then I make the entry for that particular day. So what do you notice when you read and reflect upon your life about what's been happening? Do you have feelings, remember, rather than allowing your feelings to have you? That's a question that it has taken me a lifetime to deal with and I still deal with because I realize sometimes my feelings overtake me. So by going to my journal, I realize, ah, my feelings don't have me. I have my feelings. Then I ask myself, well, what kinds of patterns do I begin to notice emerging in my life? Then I'm beginning to notice that my story and God's story are in parallel. That I try um, to have an honest to God dialogue. I don't know if you've ever read Martin Buber about the great Jewish mystic spoke um, in his writings uh, in I thou or in German in the original language Ishtu. Ishtu is the uh, formal thou, uh, or I should say the informal, right, Kim? Um, that That's like using thou uh, would be in English, although it doesn't have the same sense of the familiar and the close and the intimate that the German Ishtu does. So I capitalized you Whenever I refer to God, I use all caps because God is um, God is something bigger than I am. Uh, and in when Moses met God at the burning bush, God said, "That's my name, I am." And I realized, well, I am. And God's I am is greater than my I am. And my, the purpose of my journal is to tell my story inside God's story. And then I talk it out with God or your higher power if you're following a step 12 step program. Now, I don't go just telling anybody about all this. Not everybody's going to understand. It's too holy. Only your heart other can understand. And the heart other I mean by a, uh, an anamkara, a soul friend, an, a spiritual director, somebody who, with whom you have a very high uh, level of trust. To me, the essence of the journal is to discover my story within God's story. Over time, you may realize that you are tracing the face of God in the journal. For instance, if you were to look in my journal, this is how I see it. I, I, those lines are all, are all the face of God. Can you see what I'm doing? <laughs> and uh, by the way, this journal also has, a, has pockets with it. In, uh, in, in because it's just a plain notebook and it has pockets with it so that I can stick papers and so on uh, as mementos of what's going on in my life. So that my life becomes a pilgrimage. I began my pilgrimage with my journal on, on March 17th, of course, <laughs> St. Patrick's Day in 1991. That's over 29 years ago now. For the first couple of years, I found it very difficult to keep a journal and up, set it aside more than once. 
it's important to be honest with yourself about all that. Then I'd like to put aside a sacred space. I use, I set up my desk like that so that it can, uh, so that it can be uh, a sacred space for me. I also use a, uh, an insight timer on my, uh, on my uh, iPhone. I have, uh, I have this uh, app. There's an app for that. <laughs> and this application um, gives me a, a nice like, singing, bowl, singing bowl to uh, help set a mood uh, for prayer, for journaling. To me, writing a journal, making a, a journal comes within a, a sacred ritual that I establish for myself, like ri rise and shine, breakfast, the newspapers, uh, the daily prayer, the journal, and walking or exercising. I may not do all that at one time, although now that I'm retired, I can, and I certainly do. But having that sacred ritual um, helps me sanctify time. Now, the second kind of journal entry is the crisis. What dreadful thing has happened? And for instance, when I was in uh, West Virginia, um, we had to work to, to do, uh, build a homeless shelter. And, uh, and in the course of building a homeless shelter, naturally got a lot of... Um, neighborhood resistance. And, and in fact, at one point it got so bad that there was a, dreath, a, a death threat. Um, and I discovered that I had to journal my way through the crisis. <clears throat> also, I've had several diagnoses in the course of my life, prostate cancer and so forth and that diagnosis raises um, uh, anxieties and fear and all kinds of feelings and introduces the reality of crisis in my life. And I journal my way through my crisis so that I can recognize that I'm having those feelings rather than those feelings having me. There is the question of security when you have a death threat <laughs> or when you're in the midst of, um, oh, when you're in the midst of a crisis, so you establish a support system, um, and and for uh, the the business with the home homeless shelter, I I did have a good relationship with my senior warden, mostly most of the vestry, not everybody, the bishop, and in fact. Uh, use the press and the courts um, to uh, to help with the support. I had to I had to go I had to take this thing to the courts because the neighborhood, of course, fought it fought it uh, tooth and nail. And uh, of course, for the diagnosis of my uh, prostate cancer, I took that uh, to my family, my spouse, my friends, my psychiatrist, my spiritual director, but mostly I take it all to the, my, my best, really probably my best friend in some sense is my journal. Now the third kind of uh, uh, journal entry is, is dealing with difficult people. <clears throat> and there's New England Gothic for you. Now, I, those two used to go to my eight o'clock service in my second church. And, uh, or at least that's what they looked like to me when I was trying to 
when I was trying to proclaim the gospel. It, it, it's not exactly the easiest way to proclaim the gospel when you get faces like that looking at you. Um, so I ask myself when, when I'm dealing with difficult people, um, identify someone I can't stand. What is it about that person that I can't stand? That's the clue that will direct you, direct you to ask the question, what is it within yourself that remains unresolved and that you need to pay attention to within you? If there's somebody out there I can't stand. There's something within me that's not resolved and that's what I need to pay attention to. Mind you, there are some folks that are just plain difficult. Now, when I'm dealing with difficult people, I also use a stick person <laughs> technology. This technology is very helpful. I draw a stick person and then I ask myself, how does this person think? I write on this, write on the piece of paper. I will take that whole piece of paper I'll, and I'll, I'll draw a line to the head. I'll say, how does this person think? Another line to the eyes and the ears. What do they see and not see? What do they hear and not hear? Like Jesus said, if you have eyes to see, then look. If you have ears to hear, then listen. Uh, but sometimes people don't. So identifying that about a difficult person can be very helpful to you. What does this person believe? What does the, where does this person go? That is to say, what's the locus? If I were to follow that person around, where would I find that person in the course of a day? What is this person's passion? If I were to draw a heart in the center there. What do they care about? What's the passion? What makes them tick? And then if I were to draw um, uh, networks around them, who are their friends and enemies? That approach almost always gives me a clue as to how to proceed in further conversation with a difficult person. So I leave that with you. To think about. And I do that right in my journal. I journal difficult people, people that are driving me nuts. Because there's something in me I need to pay attention to when I realize that. Now, the fourth kind of uh, journal entry is about your dreams. I like to when you have a dream and it's driving you crazy and you can't understand it, write it down. In fact, I keep a little notebook by my bed on the nightstand with the pen. And as soon as I have a dream, I get up and I jot down what that dream was about. Then um, I, the following day, when I get up and I'm doing my journal, I journal it out and I fill in the details, the persons, the colors, the textures, the background, the scenery, to help me understand what my dream was about. To do dream interpretation, and this could be a whole, a whole series on this, but in general, your dreams are always about you and the constituent parts of who you are. It's about the dynamics of your personality. It's what the uh, Jung used to talk about, the animus and the anima within you, that there's a dimension of maleness and the feminine, the masculine and the feminine within every one of us. And to what extent are those dynamics that work within me. The shadow is that part of me that I really find frightening. The ruffian in me is some rough edge that's in me. And then the trickster in me is, of course, 
play in tricks and making a joke. What's that about? This will lead you to some interpretation. So in my dreams, what does God want you to understand about yourself? What is the most bewildering element of the dream? And what do you learn from that? What are the layers of interpretation about your dream? And understanding which evolve. those understandings evolve over time. And how is God inviting you to grow? Now, finally, uh, The Departed. It's a good movie. But we have departed loved ones with whom we oftentimes have unfinished business. From your family of origin, a spouse, a significant other, a friend. Don't be afraid to tell the truth if you decide to write them a letter. I would encourage you to write a letter to departed loved ones with whom you have unfinished business. That's another purpose for the journal. To be, uh, there is a psychiatrist who once said that healing requires resolution and reconciliation with your mother and father for there to be psychiatric and theological wholeness and wellness. So it's coming to terms with, um, with your family of origin that will lead you towards some kind of wholeness and wellness. And then when you write that letter on your journal, simply allow the communion of, of saints to deliver it uh, to your loved one. And we believe in the communion of saints, the angels and the archangels, and they will be faithful and deliver your communication with them. In conclusion, <laughs> let's have a little conversation. I'm sure you may have some questions. How have you experienced the journal? How has it helped? In what way is it problematic? How do you resist it? Are, are there other artistic expressions that you find more helpful? Art, spiritual direction, exercise, friendship, etc. So I'm coming out of all that to go back to our screen where I can see where are you all? Oh, I know it. I don't. Okay, I got it. There you are. So, what do you think? I think what? it's outstanding. Um, the one thing that I picked up that I never even thought of before was communion with the saints. Mm hmm. I, I, you know, I know about writing the letter to yeah. let go of anger or confusion, whatever it may be, but it, the thought never occurred to me to give that letter. Uh, I think that that's brilliant, and um, I really appreciate that. I think that's a wonderful tool for journaling. Yeah. Father Paul, you might want to stop sharing, and that will bring everybody back onto the screen easier. Oh, is that that? Yeah, okay, that's what I'm doing wrong. Okay. Where am I? Oh, I see what I'm doing. Okay, there we are. Hey, guys. <coughs> I'm back. Okay. Yes, 
Yes, I, 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 that was something, I forget where I picked that up, uh, Jane, mm -hmm. but I, you know, you pick up all these things along the way. And, and I, so one time when I was on retreat, I just, I just, you know, put this whole thing together, um, trying to figure out and and somebody somebody came, or, or or it was maybe in my maybe in my reading someplace anyway I, I picked that up and very helpful to me well i had a lot of unfinished uh, business with my mother and father for instance <laughs> and so uh um i found that you know you can really send the make a dispatch to to them via the community mm -hmm. yeah. The only there, uh, journaling I do really is uh, dream, dreams. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of dreams, mm -hmm. very detailed. <coughs> I do write out, down all the details. I have one I'm still trying to figure out, so I'm going to use your method. Okay. Okay. I'm looking at it. Um, um, yes. Um, is there a way you can send us this information, uh, all these uh because I didn't um, get it all written down and I'd like to I, have it so I could start. I'm glad you asked that question. I'm so glad you asked that question, Sister Kim, because I will, I will load this up um, onto YouTube and uh, I will publish it and, um, and uh, put it up on Facebook. Uh, I'll put it up on my blog and send it to you. How's that? That's good. It's because I, 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 I can save it and upload it to YouTube as a slideshow. Okay. 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 What's your blog's name? Oh, my blog. I'll I'll share it with you. But uh, it for for the for you. Uh, well, for anybody that wants to know, it's uh, fatherpaulsplace.blogspot.com. F R P A U L S P L A C E. Father Paul's place. Okay. Uh, blogspot.com. Sister Pat, you were. Yeah, I I, I loved it. Um, I it reminded me of all the benefits uh, of journaling, and um, um, I I I I have. Uh, I have a, a, the thought that this would be something good to offer to congregations. Mm, and, mm. Um, and I think, you know, uh, we're doing a, a planning meeting and I, I'm going to suggest we invite you to share that with our congregation at St. Cross. I'd you, love to. I would love yeah. to. And, and, and you know, now that we have this technology, we can, sure. we can do it easy. Yeah. And, and the other thing I was going to say is, um, I, th I didn't ever think of it before as a way that the clarity that you have of, of, of seeing what God is trying to show us. Yeah. And, um, and I, I, I didn't, uh, I, I think sometimes if we, uh, think we have to figure it all out by ourselves, we miss something, but if mm -hmm. we allow more of a mystery to this thing, mm -hmm. that uh, there are hidden things that are being revealed in, in, through through our own journals, I think we can. Um, I, I, I think people don't often say, "Well, I, it's too much trouble, whatever." But I think it could be uh, sold to them in a way that, "Hey, that you, there's hidden gold, there's pearls." Mm -hmm. that uh, of, of many prices that you can't buy that are being offered to you every day and through your journaling you can have them uh, yep. yep if you think of it really as that sacred journey as a dialogue with god you realize that when you're writing there comes time there there comes a time frequently when the pen seems to be flying across the page all by itself mm -hmm. and that's god's hand that's why i think of this as tracing the face of god uh, i never thought of it th that way mm. but thank you so 
we'll, I'll be back to you soon. We're meeting <laughs> on the 29th of August. I would love to. That'd be fun. I'd love to do that. Father Paul, have you combined contemplative prayer with journaling? Well, I mean, when, that, that's perhaps why I'm doing all this, the, this prayer series. Uh, to me, to me, just, you know, uh, I started off with the basics, the principal kinds of prayer. Then I, then last week, you know, that pattern for prayer, which, which is the actual discipline of contemplative prayer. And then this, the journal is really, now we're, we're looking at three different ingredients or, or leaves of a three, of a, of a, of a Trinitarian leaf of a, of a, of a, you know, a shamrock, let's say the shamrock of, of uh, contemplative prayer. So I know, so I know what the seven kinds of prayer are. I know what a pattern for prayer is, and I know how to journal my life with God. Um, so if I've got a good handle on those things, uh, then they, they, they dovetail with each other. I think this would be good also for my, eventually for my um, classmates in my pet chaplaincy class. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't know if anybody, I, I, I still am getting to know everybody. And of course we have people from South Africa and Australia in the class and, but, uh, and they might be journalers. Um, but in, we talk about uh, care fatigue and, 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 things that, that they're experiencing as being chaplains and of, of, of people and now as they study to learn to be chaplains for people in relation to their pets and loss of animals and yep. that this would be a good way of helping them through the uh, pet loss uh, trauma. Yeah. I, I, I got to tell you that when I when I was a chap, I, I did clinical training at Mass General in the Burns Department, and I wish I'd known <laughs> that mm -hmm. uh, how, how to use a journal to handle the feelings I was having about hogs. I was absolutely out of my depth with uh, so many uh, on so many occasions in, in as a ch in a, in my attempt to be a chaplain. Mm -hmm. Especially starting out in a Burns department. Yeah, that was that was a tough one. Mm. Father Paul, I think for myself, I'm I'm one who started many journals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And haven't stuck with it. So I, I hope that I liked your, your introduction into just Here's the day. Here's the weather. You know, yeah. means of just getting you into starting sure. flowing with it. Yeah, I mean, I, I got to tell you, like, like when I have my my journal, this, you know, this is a new notebook. Uh, some journal, uh, some some people believe you should have a loose loose leaf Nate notebook, but I I like this now. You know, there weeks will come and go before I make the journal entry, but that doesn't stop me from continuing on. Mm -hmm. So I, you just pick it up and continue. Um, I don't. I don't need to feel religious about keeping a journal. Mm -hmm. I just pick it up and continue. But I like that you have a rhythm of your day. Yeah, that helps. <clears throat> puts you into a routine to do it. Yeah, that that helps. And and once I once I do all of that stuff, and I of course I love to get up early. That helps. I get up early, and you know I, I have my breakfast, my newspaper, my you know, then I say my prayers, my journal. I go out and I take care of the birds and go for a walk. Also, um. Uh parts of this where I see a centering so that we can prepare to journal. Yeah. You know, for instance, you light a candle and there's a candle, how you set up your desk. Yeah. I, for one, um, 
when I need to be centered, whether it's to pray yeah. or, or to journal, um, which I do more praying than journaling, to be frank. Um, I listen to the Benedictine sisters and they just put me down. I just calm down and um, whatever it is that I need to do, whether it's prayer or thinking or reading, um, it really just, it just centers me. Yeah. So some of those qualities are in here and, and they can, they help us to, it helps me to become more contemplative in my daily routine, you know, and the things. And this I also do. helps. Do you yeah. want me to just play the first three bells? This is, this is, uh, let me unplug this so that you can hear. This is really, I love this because, um, uh, it's a lovely way to start the focus and center. You hear that okay? Oops. Actually, your audio is much better with you unplugged than it is with your earphones. <laughs> oh, is it? Is my audio better this way? Yeah. Well, I got a new computer, so maybe uh, I don't give it enough credit. How's that? Is that better? Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, okay. Is that just for iPhones? You can get that for Android too? I believe it's, I believe you can get this you for, can. Android. and then you can set the, your in, so I, I set my timer for 20 minutes. And uh, at, the, at the beginning and at the end, there's those three bells. And then I set another bell for five minutes in between. So so it starts and then five minutes in, five minutes, another five minutes, oh. another five minutes, and then at the end is that. So it it is really so I set the whole thing up <laughs> mm -hmm. for centering me in the task at hand. Mm -hmm. So oh, what's the name of the app, Father? It is called Insight Timer. I-N-S-I-G-H-T. Insight Timer. Huh. Thank you. And there's thousands of people on, on, the, uh, on that thing. Tens of thousands of people on this. So that all around the world, you know, and you'll get messages from people saying, thanks for meditating with me. It's interesting. Yeah. Life is interesting. Isn't it though? I mean, the things you discover, I don't know who introduced that to me. I can't even remember half the time where I get all this good stuff, but um, it helped, it just, all this stuff helped me. Oh, I found it. Did you? Yeah, Insight Timer. So it's on your Android? It's on so the Play Store. You can play around with those bells. Pick one you like. All right, I'm installing it now. <laughs> Boy, we don't have to wait in this world today, do we, for, for much? No. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the whole world is at our fingertips, honestly. I mean, there's part of this electronic world that 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 can be annoying and irritating but i'll tell you there's a lot of it that's really pretty impressive if you're using it for the purposes i mean for god's purposes but i i think i, I, I think of my facebook uh as a way of proclaiming the gospel and it has I think at times our technology, though, makes us very impatient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get something in seconds where it's too slow. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay. Well, well, thank you all for being uh, here. It's, oh, uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, Thank you very Thank much. Thank you.
Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, let, let's, uh, uh, if you have just a minute or two, or two let's conclude with uh, some prayer, okay? Yes. For the church and the world. Um, where are we? I think I've I've got lost. Um, let's just offer our prayers for the church of the world. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever He may send you. May He, uh, oh God, help me out! I've just got my brains fried. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again to our doors. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of God, the most holy, undivided, everlasting Trinity be with you always. Amen. 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 Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. And uh, next week, same time, same station. Um, I I would, although it's very sa simple and straightforward. I'm thinking uh, that I, for the record, and for my Facebook crowd and all that, I think we need to go over the daily office. Okay. That works. Okay. And then we'll be finished with uh, with the unit on prayer, and then we'll think of something else to talk about. Okay. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Okay. God bless. Bye bye. God bless you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Stop the recording. <laughs>